I couldn't be happier. Um, you know, when I, I sit here and I and I and I watch her during performances, you know, and that you're right, that incredible voice, um, that expression, and she, and it's not just her voice; she's also doing this, and you see her face, and you know that all of that gets transmitted into that microphone. Uh, so you know, she is the perfect storyteller for for my books. Actually, I started writing when I was seven years old. So way before I became a doctor, I knew I wanted to be a writer. Um, but my parents convinced me I would never make a living at it. So that, that's really the reason I went into medicine. But even through medical school, through my medical training, uh, my internship, I knew I wanted to write. And I thought it would be a hobby. I didn't realize I could make a living at it. Um, and, I, and I really got the, the chance to work on a novel when I went on maternity leave. So it's my children who are responsible for my becoming a full-time writer. My sons are now 30 and 28. Uh, and I know that um, my younger son, you know, likes to read. So when he reads my thrillers, he, he says, wow, that was, you know, that was amazing. My mother wrote this. So yeah, they're, they're very proud of me. The fight inside when you change a career like that is that I was leaving a very, um, a very secure profession for something that had no security. Writing is, um, it's really difficult to make a living, and I think the very small majority of people can make a living at, at writing, so it was a big gamble, uh, but I felt that if I didn't do it, I mean, at the end of your life, what do you look back on? Do you look back on the career you, you wish you'd had, or the career that you regretted you had? And that's the one thing I didn't want, is to look back with regret. I would say passion, obsession, and frustration. <laughs> All those three things are involved in, in, in writing. When I wrote the first book in, uh, in the Jane Rizzoli and Maura Isle series, it was called The Surgeon, and Jane was just a, a minor character in that story. Um, she really had not much of a role, but as I was writing the story, she became just more and more aggressive, and, and she, she took center stage a lot of the time. And I thought by the end of the book, well, I'm really interested in this woman. I want to know what happens next. So I wrote The Apprentice, and suddenly I had a series. And the series came about just because uh, the character fascinated me. I think I'm pretty good at maintaining tension. Uh, that is the real secret to thrillers. It's not action. It's not bloodshed. It's this, always this sense that something is not quite right. Um, and I like to play on that tension. I like to play on emotions. And I think that's where women reader, women writers have the advantage is that we're very in touch with, you know, what characters are feeling in any particular scene. Well, you know, it's every writer's dream to have their characters show off on television. So I'm, I'm very thrilled it made it to TV, even though the characters are, are different from the book characters. I mean, they're much more glamorous now. They're, uh, they're beautiful. Uh, when, when Jane Rizzoli is not good looking in the books, but she's, She's a gorgeous on, on TV. Um, and what I'm really thrilled about is that it's, it's introducing people to these, to these characters. It makes them want to read the books. So I think I'm getting a lot more readers because of the TV show. Well, the TV show is a lot funnier. Uh, there's a lot of humor in the show. Um, there's a lot of glamor. Uh, but it still, keeps, it still maintains the thriller aspect. So each, each show is, of course, another mystery. Um, but I mean, I think my readers and, and the TV viewers understand these are just two interpretations of the same, uh, the same characters. And it's really the books and the TV show are about two women who are good friends, um, who respect each other and who are the best at what they do. I hate to admit it, but American politics makes me laugh a lot. Some of it is so absurd. Some of the things that are going on right now, you know, we have a new election going on. And I just look at it and I think, this seems like it's out of a movie. It doesn't seem possible. You know, it, it seems that I have what we call writer's block. I would say it's story block with every book because I don't plot them out ahead of time. And I find the answer to the plot issue sometime in the middle or two-thirds of the way through the story. The place I write the best is sitting at my own desk in my own house. And when I'm pulled away from that, it, it, it interrupts things. Um, but I am, I'm... You know, I have to travel a lot now, and like last year, I think I was away from home for about three months traveling on business. So, um, you know, you, they say you get a, a year to write a book, well, really, you get nine months. <laughs> so that, that's where the traveling comes in. But I also use travel to, um, to do research as well. Um, and sometimes I don't know when a trip will come into a book maybe five years down the line, but it's things that 
I experience them and I, and I, I remember those you know, moments that stand out and I end up using them in books. If I'm going on vacation, then it's I'm going to eat and I'm going to see interesting things and I'm going to walk a lot. Um, so those are, yeah, I mean, I, I still, I think the journey is so much fun for me. It's still, even after coming here on business, I still enjoy seeing new places. I think the best breakfasts in the world are actually in the United States. <laughs> I love enchiladas for breakfast. It's very strange. So for lunch, Italy, right? Glass of Prosecco, plate of pasta, or, you know, something on the Lake Como. I mean, that, that would be like the ultimate place to eat. Um, and for dinner, I would choose uh, Hong Kong. Those would be my three dream breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Well, I have wanted to do something about Asian American culture for a long time. I had an editor tell me many years ago that those kinds of books didn't sell very well. So um, I listened to her, and I think she, I thought you know she's, she was probably right. She she knows her business. Um, but now I have uh, I have this hit series. I have a lot of fans. I could put it into a Jane and Mora book, and I thought now is a is a way to work that into the story. Especially in America, we drive long distances, and I think that's that's where the audiobooks are so popular. Is people are on the road, um, or they're working on their exercise machines, and um, so I think with busy people, busy modern people now who don't have the time to sit down and read a book, this gives them a chance to read to to read a book while they're doing something else.